Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about a uh, vulnerability that's been found in 26 uh, router manufacturers hardware and uh, it's called the net USB vulnerability. Uh, it was found on Tuesday May 19th 2015 by a company or a, a group called SEC Consult and basically what they found it, uh, is that 26 manufacturers of uh, routers a common very common routers actually including D-Link, Netgear, TP-Link, Trendnet and Zygcel uh, all use the same net USB uh, USB sharing software in their routers and this is a vulnerability they found basically it allows local users so LAN users to exploit your router and basically either wipe it out or crash it that's all they've currently found they're actually testing to see whether they it can be uh, exploited from the internet or not so currently it can't be ex as far as they know it can't be exploited from the internet but it can be exploited from the LAN now you say well no big deal I don't have any hackers in my LAN well what if one of your computers gets compromised and somebody actually gets inside access to your LAN well at that point they can go back to your router and actually run this vulnerability against it this note that it's there and that you know those 26 manufacturers actually uh, have admitted to having this code in their uh, routers not all of them have admitted to having the vulnerability but if it's in their routers more than likely it does have the, the uh, vulnerability I'll put a list in the video description of these web page addresses for this information as well as a list of all the hardware affected currently now it's the 24th today so it's only been out uh, this vulnerability has only been known about for the last five days and TP-Link has stated that they are already working to come up with solutions or firmware upgrades to fix this bug. Note that your router does need to have a USB port and a USB port printer sharing capabilities. If you have a Netgear or a Zyxel or a D-Link and it doesn't have USB ports, then you don't have a problem. So this is only covering the listed manufacturers with USB port routers. Uh, unfortunately for me, or you know, not really unfortunately for me, Fortunately for me, I own a WDR4300 TP-Link router. Now, it has a vulnerability as well in the stock software, but I'm not running the stock software. I'm running the DD-WRT firmware, which does not have that vulnerability. Netgear currently has no timeline on whether, you know, when when if you read this article of when they're going to come up with a patch for this currently they say all their netgear uh, routers that are running the uh, netusb.inf software are currently vulnerable and there's nothing you can do to stop it you can't turn it off you, even if you don't have anything plugged into it it's still vulnerable basically you're vulnerable until they come up with a firmware fix for your router and hopefully they'll do that before you a new hack on this is found but you know that once a hack is found on a router or on any device the hackers go to go to town on it to try and find if they can exploit it in some other way they're very creative very dastardly bunch and if not brilliant as well on, on top of that what do you need to know you need to know that uh, net usb feature is enabled in all the routers that are listed and again whether something's plugged into it or not it doesn't matter uh, you can turn it off but at least on the netgear devices that doesn't mitigate the vulnerability um, there's no workaround available and the tcp port cannot be firewalled nor is there any way to disable the service on the devices uh, if i owned a netgear device and you know i, I would see whether it's compatible with ddwrt here's the white paper from this this uh, group the secconsult.com group and it states what they found and which hardware they found it at. Again, I'll list this hardware in the video description and I will list the link to this information. Uh, this is my uh, WDR4300, which I'm using, which is vulnerable with the stock firmware that TP Link is currently uh, allowing you to have on this router. You know what you can do? You can, you can upgrade it to DDWRT. And I checked on DDWRT's forum and they state unequivocally that they are not using the net USB software they're using the uh, USB IP software and here is a, a, a way of finding out that if you're running this the uh, DDWRT software then here's the USB IP uh, project this is the uh, software that the DDWRT firmware is using 
let's just go to the TP Link site and I'll show you a few things that you need to know if you don't want to go the DDWRT path. So if you go to tplink.com and you and live in the US like I do, then it automatically defaults you to the US site. And the latest firmware for this router is uh, the, uh, according to the US site, is 141113. What does that mean? Well, really what counts is right up here. It's from 2014, 1113. So it's from, uh, you know, November 13th, uh, 2014. So this firmware, if you update to it, will not fix this bug. This f bug was found six days ago. So unless the firmware has been released in the last six days, then there's no fix here yet. Now, they say, TP-Link says that they already have fixes for this on the uh, support site, but it's not for this router. Again, easy fix for me. I'm running DDWRT. Here's another interesting thing I found. If you go up here to the United States part and change it, or click on change, and then go to the global site, then go to support, and download center, and then Control F here and do a DWRD -WR and basically look for your router in here. So mine's a uh, TP-Link WDR4300 and there we are. Um, and then you go to firmware and scroll down. You'll note that they have the 113 soft, the 113 firmware right there, but they also have a newer firmware here. Uh, but unfortunately even this even though it's 20315, it's still not new enough for it to address this issue. But interesting note that if you want the latest firmware for your router, don't go to the US site, go to the global site and check here because it looks like they updated here uh, quicker than they do in on the uh, US site. I'm not sure why, uh, but um, it says here it's for the TLWDR4300 uh, UN1. So I, I'm thinking that's uh, universal, I'm not sure, um, you know, it's up to you which one you go with, but it's listed under this router. Next, wh what I wanted to show you also is if you're going to go the DDWRT way and you have a uh, WDR4300 like me, I have this one, uh, version one, then you can go straight to DDWRT.com and find out whether your uh, router is supported. And WDR WR, sorry, I have a hard time with that. Let's go WDR43. And you'll see that it shows up here as supported. You see right here. And if you want to see if it's, if you don't have this router and you want to see if, if you have a TP link, so TP, let's go with TP dash link. And it'll list all the TP link routers that are available. If I learn to spell here, there you go. Or if you go back, you can go to Netgear and you get all the Netgear ones. And if it's if they say yes next to it, then more than likely it's supported. Uh, if you don't find it by using this router database, another little trick you can do is go here to downloads. And then here you see other downloads. So we're going to go here. And then you go to the beta listing. And, you know, if you want the latest beta software, go for 2015. And you'll see that there's a bunch of listings here. And I, I hang back at least one uh, firmware revision because sometimes you get bugs that uh, can uh, brick your router. So again, I don't take any responsibility for any of this. I'm just showing you where you can get the firmware for your router. So I'm just gonna kick a, uh, click it on the 26866 right down here. And you'll get a huge list of all the uh, beta software for all the routers available. Now. Again, yours may or may not be on here. Do a control F again and just check. And you see that my WDR4300 uh, version one is there, the 4310. If you do a uh, control F for Netgear, you'll see that there's a bunch of Netgears uh, supported here. And, you know, again, this is a quick fix. And if you know how to handle it, uh, an upgrade for your uh, router as well. I, I find the DDWR. Uh, T software to be very, very stable and very, very uh, reliable and fast. So, you know, I, I actually don't run anything but the software and that makes me not vulnerable to this current vulnerability in all these routers because they don't use this software. 
So that's my quick overview on the uh, K codes net USB vulnerability, and uh, which you know is going to impact millions of devices worldwide, as this article says. Look at the video description for these links, and also look at the video description for the hardware list. I'll put that there as well. That's it for my video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this video and it helped you out in some way, do me a favor, click on the like button right down here. And uh, you know, if you wish to subscribe to my channel, just click on this link up here. And that should subscribe you to the, the uh, Richard Lloyd channel or Richard Lloyd USA channel. Um, okay, again, thank you very much for your time and watching.